underneath the hood here, you want to go ahead to the fuse box itself. You're going to pinch in the two little tabs on either side of this lid. I'm going to go ahead and lift up this cover. Go ahead and work its way out. So on the back side of the fuse box cover, it gives us identification what fuses and relays do what. Now we're looking for the fuel pump relay, which is right here. And we're going to go ahead and locate the fuel pump beside the horn and below the fog lamp in that uh, triangle or that pattern right here. And we'll go ahead and remove that fuel pump relay. We're able to go ahead and locate our fuel pump relay or fuse right here. I'm going to go ahead and wiggle this and just set that aside. Now we're going to go ahead and start the vehicle and let any of the fuel run out of those lines through the injectors. Okay, there's not enough fuel in there for the vehicle to start up. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut that down. Then we can go ahead and reinstall our fuse right here into the box. And we'll go ahead and pop our cover back on. Using our 10 millimeter wrench, we're gonna go ahead and remove the negative terminal on the battery. I'm gonna set that aside. Now I want to go ahead and open up the gas cap door and remove the fuel cap. Now on the front side of the tank, we have a line that comes over. I want to go ahead and disconnect the line to the tank itself. On the top and bottom of it, there are little squeeze tabs. I like to use a pair of pliers with some tips on them like this here. You want to have a catch can or some towels underneath the vehicle as well. What we're going to do is pinch those tabs and separate this connector. We're gonna go ahead and try and use a pair of narrow jaw pliers and get onto our release clips right here. Pinch that. I'm gonna try and loosen this here. And then we'll pop that off that line. Like so. On the front of the tank, there is a cross member and the upper or forward strap is bolted right here. So using a 13 millimeter socket and our ratchet, we're gonna go ahead and loosen that. Now, once you have your vehicle jacked up and supported on jack stands, now's when you wanna use your jack or a gas tank lift or hoist I'm gonna go ahead and get this underneath. I'm going to just get it in here so it's making contact. Just to support this so we can go ahead and remove the bolt on our rear strap here. Using a 13 millimeter socket and extension, we're gonna go ahead and loosen the bolt for the rearward strap on the tank. You want to make sure you're wearing safety glasses on something like this here anytime you're working underneath the vehicle so you don't get rust or debris in your eyes. We can now remove this bolt from this rear strap. We're now going to go to the forward mounted strap, lift that up and see if we can remove that. On the rear strap, we're gonna lift it up, pull it right out, and set this aside. I wanna go ahead and disconnect the fuel fill tube here, and we're gonna use an eight millimeter socket to reach around and get on the other side of the hose clamp here and loosen that. Now I wanna go ahead and lower the tank slowly. The trick here is that the tank has to come back and then down, so we're gonna be careful doing this. Go ahead and pop that fillet hose off like so. And then pinching the ears on the green tab or the green clip here, I'm gonna work this hose off and it'll disconnect, leaving the green lock tab in place, separating that line. Now this red lock tab is a horseshoe design. So on the bottom of each side, you wanna reach around 
pinch that in and pull up, that's gonna release our lock tab right here. And I'll just go ahead and get a pick in here. Try and pop that up like so. It'll be safe to go ahead and pull that off. Go ahead and lower the tank and work it back as we're coming out. It's pressing on this tab on the top using a pick. I'm gonna go ahead and use the pick in your fingers to remove this electrical connector. And then the one beside it here. Just wanna lift up on this little tab and work that connector off as well. Now we did go ahead and vacuum off the top of this, cleaned it all up so we don't have any debris fall inside the tank once we get the lock ring off. It's all wet because we did put a rust penetrant around all of these connections. These two connectors do have to come off as well as this lock ring here. Now our vent here or our tube was kind of stuck so we did spray it with some rust penetrant. I'm gonna go ahead, we're able to loosen this up work it back. I'm going to go ahead and pinch our tabs here. These are actually retainers. Once those retainers are lifted and over that raised lock ring there, we should be able to slide this off. I'm going to use a pair of needle nose pliers and gently Squeeze in these tabs here. We want to grab our other pliers. We want to go ahead and loosen this. Gently rocking it. And go ahead and get that pick in there. Underneath those little tabs. And pop your line off. Now if you're going to be reusing your fuel line retainer clip here, you're just going to gently Use a small pick. I'm going to go ahead and work this off. And install it on the new pump and sender. Now using a brass punch and a hammer, we're going to go ahead and spin this lock ring counterclockwise. Try and unlock this unit. Now we get our lock ring loose. We'll set that aside. We want to be careful not to get any debris inside the tank. So at this point, we're going to wipe it out and clean it. Now, before you remove the fuel pump and sending unit, you want to make sure that you identify where this tab is facing and it's facing towards the back and there's actually notches or marks on our tank to identify that. Make sure your connectors are facing towards the rear. Now you can go ahead and slowly raise the original part. Make sure you have a catch can or a bucket or something like that you can put the unit into because it will have gasoline running out. Now's a good time to go ahead and clean around the perimeter. Do not brush the dirt into the tank. Wipe it away. Once it's all cleaned up, we'll go ahead and set the new unit in. Now that we have everything cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead and set our new gasket into place. And we'll go ahead and line up our new pump and sending unit and drop this down inside. Go ahead and make sure that our gasket lines up all the way around as we press this down into place. Once we have this unit 
compress down into place. I'm going to go ahead and get our lock ring set down. All right, now that we have the lock ring lined up, I'm going to go ahead and use our brass punch again and go ahead and get that set into place. Reinstall our retainer right here. And we'll take our fuel line, line that up. Go ahead and press it on. It'll be locked into place once you see those tabs coming through on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and pop this into place for now. This will probably have to get loosened again when we go to reconnect the other line, but this will keep it in a safe position so we don't cause any damage to the input. I'm going to go ahead and install this line here. And we'll snap into place. Go ahead and start lining things up to get this tank back up into that forward mounted cross member. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect our electrical connections on the top of the tank. We have our fuel pressure sensor right here. We have our main harness right here. We'll push this on and then we'll press our lock tab in. We're able to get the tank up a little bit further. Now I'm gonna go back on top and try and connect the lines to the top of the tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect our fuel line or our flex line to the steel line, lining up our plastic lock clip. And you hear it click into place, give it a good tug and that is locked in. I'm gonna go ahead and grab our upper line here. Line this up, I wanna press that on. And once it's on all the way, press down your lock. Snapped it into place. Right on the upper portion of the tank, we have our vent line right here. Just go ahead and flex that around and we'll pop that into the clip like so. We're now gonna go ahead and install our fuel filler hose. Line that up and work the hose on. Once it's in position, line up your hose clamp. All right, go ahead and get that tightened up. You definitely want to snug it up once it feels like it's getting tight. Let's go a little bit more. Let's now go ahead and install our vent tube here. Now we'll go ahead and install our fuel line on the front. You hear it click and then you can reinstall the plastic line into its retainer clip on the top of the tank. Let's go ahead and install our a rearward strap. Now what we're going to do is try and line up the bolt, put that through the strap, and we'll have to go ahead and wiggle the tank around a little bit to get this lined up. We'll try and get that bolt started by hand, a few threads. We're not going to tighten that yet. We're going to go ahead and put the front strap on and get that front bolt started. Let's go ahead and feed this part of the strap up over the tank and into the notch in the chassis. Once it goes into the notch, you lift it up into place and bring the strap down to the cross member here. With the strap lined up, I'm going to go ahead and get the bolt started by hand. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten down the rearward bolt on the strap. And we can tighten down the forward bolt on the strap. 
With both straps anchored with their bolts, we can now remove the jack. Reinstall your gas cap. Reconnect the ground on your battery terminal. Once you've completed this, you will now want to go ahead and start the vehicle and check for any leaks.